good or green to those who are watching outside the country or from other countries good afternoon to some and good morning to all my brethren here in British Columbia and those who are watching from all over Canada and the world thank you so much for joining with us and I really praise and thank God for giving me this opportunity once more indeed it's a great honor and a great privilege to be with you today please like comments and share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Today we are also going to have our communion. So please prepare your elements if you want to participate with us. And I am encouraging you to please participate with us because I am believing that this ordinance by the Lord before he ascends to heaven will ask us deliverance, healing, forgiveness, provision, protection, and wholeness. For your information, I am still in isolation at home due to COVID exposure. Pakmok. So I am not supposed to be in direct contact with anyone. But because of this online technology that God has provided for us, it is really a great blessing that we are still able to get together virtually. So before we go further, let us pray first. Lord Jesus, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit. May your presence be made known and manifest undoubtedly and strongly to every believers and put conviction into our hearts and minds that our fellowship today shall result into real life application and action. Holy Spirit guide us, lead us, and teach us all things about your truth and godliness help us O oh lord for our hearts soul and minds to be receptive and responsive of your words according to your will and purpose help us and enable us to continually honor you praise you and worship you and love you with all of our hearts with all of our souls, with all of our strength, and with all of our minds. Holy Spirit, take full control and overtake us by your truth today. For we know that only your truth will set us all free. Edify your church now, magnify your name, be glorified in our midst. To you alone be the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Now, what are you waiting for? Subscribe the, like, and share. Amen. Kamong mga bisaya, subscribe na mo. Like o share na lagi. O paminaw mo o maayo kay kining maayong balita sa natawhan kasaligan kay ginoo ang ginikanan. So what are you waiting for? We are waiting for your pastor to start na and finish quickly. No, that's not the title. I mean, that's the title of our message today. What are you waiting for? Amen. Since we are on our second Sunday of the Advent season, so therefore, let me share about some Christmassy messages 
and let me start with this question what are you waiting for because advent means looking back or remembering of the first arrival of our lord jesus christ as a baby in the manger and looking forward in anticipation for his second coming for many of us we are unfamiliar with the advent season or it is just me maybe some of us already knew that the advent season focuses on expectation and think that it served as an anticipation of christ's birth in the season leading up to christmas so i thought it was but there's more to advent and i don't want to go on more historical details about it but today advent lasts for four sundays leading up to christmas by the way advent symbolizes the present situation of the church in these last days it says in acts 2 17 in the last days god says i will pour out my spirit on all people your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions your old men will dream dreams and in hebrews 1 2 but in the last days in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe and everything in it as god's people we wait for the return of christ in glory to complete his eternal kingdom the church us during advent looks back upon christ's first coming in celebration and remembrance while at the same time eagerly waiting in anticipation of our lord jesus christ returns for his us for his church and us so to balance these two themes of remembrance and anticipation the first two sundays of advent is waiting forward to christ's second coming and the last two sundays looking backward in remembrance and in celebration of christ's arrival which is christmas that is the usual church tradition since today falls on the first sundays on the first two sundays so we're still in the waiting of our lord jesus second coming that's our topic which are or which we are actually are still waiting unless he comes now so while most of the jewish nation are still waiting to his first coming and i don't understand how they miss his first coming when in fact our lord jesus came from them one among them as and sent for them in the first place while they are still waiting for the first coming we as christians we are already waiting for his second coming so what are you waiting for like na share and subscribe <laughs> okay hallelujah so for learning and life application from the moment onwards from this moment i mean onwards let's read and examine the scriptures together what it said in matthew 2 verse 1 beginning verse 1 onwards jesus was born in bethlehem in judea during the reign of king herod about that time some wise men from eastern lands remember lands plural arrived in jerusalem asking where is the newborn king of the jews we saw his star as it rose 
and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply troubled when he heard this, as we, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of the religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people. Then Herod called for a private meeting, <coughs> for a private meeting with the wise men. Excuse me. <coughs> then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word and for the hearing of your words today. Please, Holy Spirit, help us rightly divide your words of truth in order for us to receive your fresh revelation and anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, what are you waiting for? Let's begin. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea. You know, Judea means land of the Jews, where all the Jews came from the tribe of Judah. So not all Israelites are Jewish, but only those who came from the tribe of Judah. Judah was the fourth son of Jacob through Leah, which Jacob later became Israel. During the reign of King Herod, King Herod was the most vicious king. He was diagnosed with many illnesses, but mostly suspicion and paranoia murdered his wife and sons for fear of taking away the monarchy from him before his death he imprisoned all prominent jews and ordered to kill all of them upon his death to ensure mass mourning So he ordered all the Jews, prominent Jews, arrested and ordered to kill all of them upon his death to ensure mass mourning. That's how cruel this King Herod is. About that time of the Jesus' birth, some wise men, notice it's plural, men, but did not mention how many of them who came. Some wise men came from eastern lands. Also, plural means that they were came and composed from many lands or from Parawi tribes or perhaps from many nations as well. They arrived in Jerusalem. Do you know Jerusalem means foundation of peace or position of peace? Thus, the Lord also called the prince of peace. And they were asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? My question is, why did you have to stop in Jerusalem? Why didn't God take them directly 
to Bethlehem. Do you really think that they needed direction? I don't think so. They all came from far away lands through the guidance of his star. <clears throat> so I suppose that their asking for direction is their own way of pronouncing the arrival of the Messiah. Therefore, the wise men, the wise men served as the first missionaries from outside Israel to evangelize Israel to announce to his own people in Jerusalem about the Messiah has been born to bring the good news of salvation therefore the wise men went to Jerusalem not really to ask direction but to tell Herod and all Jerusalem about the arrival of the Messiah. The Messiah that they have been waiting for so long. Which some of them or most of them are still waiting at this moment. So how about you? I'm talking to you who are watching and listening. What are you waiting for? Subscribe na. Likes and share. So that your close family, friends and others will also be informed about the good news of your salvation. And then we'll continue the wise man said, we saw his star as it rose. According to the wise men, they saw his star. You know, a star signifies light. Thus, the Lord Jesus also called the light of the world. And so are we who believe in him. Are you the light of the world around you? Or to those around you. Parents, when your baby was born, did you see a star on them? Maybe the mom because of difficulty during delivery. I doubt the dad. Though in their grateful heart, their baby is already a star. A blessing that brought deliverance and joy for the entire family. Then the wise man said, and we have come to worship him. When the wise men saw his star, they were convicted to take into action by going on a mission to evangelize Jerusalem about the Messiah. But no one believed them. No one even bothered to check out with them into Jerusalem or into Bethlehem if what they saw, if what they said, or what they heard were true. Brethren, their testimony were true. And so are your testimonies. So do not be discouraged or be dismayed when no one believes you or no one believes your testimonies. But continue to be like the wise men marching towards Jerusalem or towards Bethlehem, towards the house of God in order to worship him. And we don't need to go far away to worship him. For Jesus said to the Samaritan woman who became the first woman evangelist, as I shared a long time ago. And he is also telling us right now 
to believe in him that the time is coming and is already here when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth when it will no longer matter whether we worship here or in Jerusalem so what really meant by worship God in spirit and in truth this is just a sidetrack kasi during our VS last Tuesday there was this question raised about the spirit what is this spirit with a small s that will return to God Referring to Ecclesiastes 12.7 For then the dust will return to the earth and the spirit will return to God who gave it. So the question is, what is this spirit that is going to return to God? To simplify my answer to that question with a question. I will repeat. Let me simplify my answer to that question with a question. What is God gave first to Adam after forming him from the dust and made him a living being? The answer is the breath of life. It says in Genesis verse 2 I chapter 2 verse 7 and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being therefore my brethren the spirit of man could be equated to the breath of God that give us life that will return to God when our physical life is over another proof in Job in Job 32 8 but there is a spirit within people the breath see the breath the breath of the Almighty within them that makes them intelligent wow they are intelligent because of the breath of God look and listen whenever a person runs out of oxygen in his brain that person become comatose and they only live through the air from oxygen tank if they were provided with oxygen tank so air or oxygen equate to breath Breath, breath equate to spirit. Here's another proof. Luke 23, 46. Jesus himself. When Jesus had cried out loud, when Jesus, and when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Let me illustrate further the difference this way. When God blows air upon you, it is the breath. When it gets into you, it becomes the spirit. First comes the breath of God and eventually you receive the spirit. The people receive the breath, and the breath become the spirit. This is the life-giving spirit. Thus the Psalms 150 verse 6 says, Let everything has breath, sing praises to the Lord. Amen. So how about you? How about you? How far away you come in order to worship God. Or rather, 
How far have you been running away from God that you were unable to worship Him anymore? So, what are you waiting for? You stop running away from God, but instead, run quickly towards Him and forget how far away you miss up your life away from God. God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and omnipresence. Nobody can ever run away from, from God, or nobody can ever outwit God. Better stop your struggle and surrender your God and surrender to God your life completely. So, what are you waiting for? Indeed, God is ready to help you right now. God, indeed, God is ready to help us right now. Because today, today, now is the day of salvation. For today, the time of the Lord's favor has come. Please, please, do yourself a great favor now, not later. Please give yourself the best ever Christmas gift. Please give the Lord a chance to give your life. I mean, please give the Lord Jesus a chance to give you life that is eternal by confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Please do not allow the devil to steal this chance away from you or tomorrow may never come so let me repeat please do yourself a great favor now not later but now the other thieves after hearing Jesus said to him after Jesus prayed this prayer on the cross father forgive them for they do not know what they do many people we don't many of us or most of us we do not know what we are doing when the other thieves heard jesus said father forgive them for they do not know what they do he said to jesus Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. So salvation is now, not later, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. Definitely not next Christmas, but today. Let me repeat. Please give yourself the best ever Christmas gift this year or today. The ultimate reason why God sent His only begotten Son is to save us and to save everyone. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So please, give the Lord Jesus a chance today to give you a life eternal by confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. It is said in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, 
not by works so that no one can boast in fact in romans 10 8 10 8 to, to 10 it says the message is very near close at hand it is in your lips and in your heart and that message is the very message about faith that we are preach that we preach i mean if you openly declare that jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with god and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved so what are you waiting for so please believe Jesus in your heart right now and declare your faith in Christ Jesus by uttering a simple prayer in your heart like this. Please repeat this prayer after me in your heart and in your mind and in your mouth. Lord Jesus, I declare now with my heart and with my mouth you as my lord and my personal savior i believe that you died for my sins please forgive me and save me thank you for your forgiveness and thank you for giving me eternal life please take full control over my life and help me live according to your will and purpose in your name jesus i pray amen and amen brothers and sisters when you pray that simple prayer i believe god honors it and we are now brothers and sisters in christ unified he has now given you the right to become children of the most high god we are now given the right to become children of the living God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And congratulations. Now, remember, this day as your spiritual birth. And continue to live the life that is to the full. Have a Bible. Or if you don't have a Bible yet, request one from me or from other Christian believers read it study it and continue listening to the Word of God as much as you can and don't forget to share to others the revelation of God in your life seek the Lord continually by joining like-minded Christian churches join to their Bible studies and their prayer meetings in their services discover your gifts in the ministry to serve and to encourage others to have faith in Christ amen now as we wait upon the Lord second coming are we waiting with the right attitude or are we like the Jews who already missed the first arrival or who already missed the first arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ I don't really understand how they missed how they missed it but as we continue dividing his word let's continue reading and King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this because he thought his kingship is under threat and he don't want to be dethroned as king as people we find it very difficult to give up something we are used of doing even if we know that it is detrimental to our work with God isn't it as King Herod was disturbed so as with everyone in Jerusalem and because King Herod was disturbed and so the entire populace was disturbed he called a meeting of the leading priest 
and teachers and religious leaders. Please notice, leading priests and teachers of the law. And Herod asked them, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? Being the leading priests and teachers of the law, they know exactly what are the prophecy in the Bible. So they answered in unison, in Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler, I may, nabulol na ako. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. For salvation comes through the Jews. For information, Bethlehem in Hebrew is two words or are two words. Beth means house, Lehem means bread. Thus, Bethlehem means house of bread. And our Lord Jesus also called the bread of life. And later, we will also break bread together in obedience to his ordinance before he ascends to heaven. And this is the prophecy. That they uttered in unison. And that was the prophecy. I mean. Then Herod called a private meeting with the wise men. And he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, Come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. The wise men came publicly to Jerusalem and now privately summoned by Herod, pretending to do to worship like them. So let's not be deceived by those pretenders. Why he didn't just send one of his secretary to go with them to check out if really there is a messiah has been born in bethlehem after this interview the wise men went their way and the star they had been in the east guided them to, bet to bethlehem it went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was when they saw the star they were filled with joy they entered the house and saw the child with his mother mary and they bowed down and worshiped him then they opened their treasure chest and gave them him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. So what we learn from this true to life story? How the Jews missed the first coming of Jesus, while we Christians are still waiting for his second coming. We might miss as well his second coming if we do not expectantly wait on the Lord. The Jews waited in vain because they waited without eager expectation. They never even bothered to examine the testimonies of the wise man from the East. They became so biased in their thinking that they have the knowledge and wisdom of all prophecies, being the chosen people of God. Did you experience this same thing being from the East? I am from the East, and most of us listening may be from the East. Have you experienced these same biases because we are from the East? However, we should endeavor to that. Amen. So now let's pass track for our message. What are you waiting for? Jesus said in John 14, verse 1 to 3, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This is Jesus speaking. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus said that he will come again. But until now, more than 2,000 years ago already, the promise of the second coming remains unfulfilled. That's a very long wait, isn't it? Is the Lord very slow to fulfill his promises? I don't think so. Let's read Second Peter 3 9. The Lord said, The Lord is not really being slow about his promise to return, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He is being patient for your sake, for our sake. He does not want anyone to perish. So he is giving more time for everyone, for all of us, to repent. Therefore, the reason of his delayed return is for our sake and for the sake of others who haven't heard yet the gospel, not being slow to his promises. While we thought of waiting for his second return or his second coming do you know that he is also waiting for us and giving us more time and chances again and again to repent for he doesn't want anyone of us to perish so what are you waiting for what are you really waiting for? While waiting for his return, which is one about waiting, we have to be doing something in preparation to his second coming. And he suggested this in Psalms 27 for 10. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Did you watch and share the song composed by Pastora uh, and sung by Remus on YouTube? Please share that and listen to that. This is where it came from. Psalm 27 14. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. While we approach God, we are assured of one of three answers. Yes, no, or nothing, or means wait. But most of the time, neither yes or no is his answer. But instead, an outright different answer from what we are praying for which most of the time also we miss for we do not recognize the answer of God because we are expecting the specific answers that we wanted in the first place however expectation is not bad entirely because we are told in the Bible that pray with an expectant heart like for example the other sunday we prayed for the cousin of brother sam for complete hearing complete healing i mean during our men's fellowship the other sunday but i was surprised she died few days later what we that I mean what we do not understand is that the answer of the Lord is much much better than what we are asking for really though we didn't witness the physical healing 
but the Lord's complete healing and deliverance from further aches and pains in this world were his answer to our prayer last Sunday. And if she believed in the Lord Jesus, she has received the promise of God in Proverbs 37, 34. Wait for the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, so shall see it. You shall see it. So, she now has inherited everlasting land of promise. When she believed in the Lord Jesus. The same like us with us. If we believe in the Lord Jesus, we will receive the inheritance of life eternal. Amen. So, what are you waiting for? Like, comment, share, and subscribe na. Actually, we spend a lot of our time waiting. Waiting in line, waiting for the news, waiting for a response, waiting a promotion, waiting for a next season of life, waiting when this COVID pandemic will end, waiting for the vaccines to arrive, waiting for 14 days isolation, like me, is hard and difficult to some, if not to all. One of my attendants called me very anxious on the situation because even her other full-time work was also affected. In addition to her worries, that she doesn't have a place to really isolate herself at home. So every now and then, we're dealing with waiting. In the morning, waiting for the washroom, waiting for the ride, the bus, the sky train, waiting in the bank, waiting at the checkout, waiting at of your orders, tagal naman, gutom na ako, waiting for your flight, waiting for your interview, waiting for the service to be done. Admittedly, I do not like waiting. And I may remind each of you that you don't like waiting either, isn't it? Why do we have so many fast food chains? Why there is so many instant foods and drinks? instant noodles why are microwaves dinner so popular is it all because we don't like to wait because waiting is difficult especially waiting in the traffic light accident happen because people cannot wait for their turn to go i told my son the other day when driving do not insist of having your right of way if it causes your accident or collision. Yes, you may be right, but if it causes you to be damaged, then it's not worth it insisting of being right. Right? It creates too much hassle, affecting time and money, and blemish your driving record, and sometimes, sometimes, your confidence in driving. Amen? Other waiting for your husband or wife, learn how to drive. Marami nakakarelate dyan. So they can drive by themselves to work or anywhere they like and you don't have to pick them up anymore. Waiting for something or someone change and cry out to the Lord. Lord, I've been waiting for so long already. When are you going to change her or him? Cell phone. Who doesn't have a cell phone nowadays? When it is dead and fully discharged, it may take a while before it turns back on. You keep pressing the on button and checking. Is it charging? Perhaps you know the feeling of waiting 
for your phone to charge but you plug in the phone and now there's nothing to do but sit and wait and even it really only takes a matter of minutes you start to feel tense and anxious wondering how long this would possibly take especially especially when you were cut off in the midst of your conversation with somebody so really most people don't like to wait huh? we often get frustrated waiting for the fast food and waiting behind the slow car in the fast lane we are always in a rush to get to the next place or to the next thing income tax filing is coming soon that we think and I always get the question how much my refunds when can I get my refunds why my refunds doesn't arrive until now waiting for a special someone to come since you were 16 and you are now on the demand let's not go there so when it comes to waiting here is what God wants us to do we need to be patient brave and courageous let me rephrase Psalms 27 for 10 wait patiently for the Lord be brave and courageous yes wait patiently for the Lord our waiting supposed to be like a pregnant woman waiting patiently for nine months and while waiting she has to do something beneficial for her and for her baby isn't it she has to eat well drink fluids well and also rest well as the baby grow bigger inside the mother also grow bigger and wider and heavier isn't it same thing with us we must and we should be like the patient of a pregnant woman we should be pregnant with the words of God while waiting for the Lord to eat well his words by seeking patiently the Lord by first ministering to him in prayer in praise and in worshiping him and by ministering to one another in God loving relationship supporting each other spiritually and in all things in joining Bible studies in reading and listening to his words and also watching our recorded messages in order for us to continually grow bigger in the knowledge and wisdom of our Lord Jesus Christ our pastor Jolie senior minister here in British Columbia is always telling us Kapatid, what are you waiting for this is the proper time this is the time to start your own Bible study so what are you waiting for amen we must and we should drink well the living water to overflowing from within us and be brave in sharing that knowledge and wisdom of the living God in order to widen our influence for Christ in order for others to believe in Christ as Lord and Savior in order to answer more soul to his eternal kingdom for others to know that Jesus is the only way to the Father that he is the only truth that can deliver us from the bondage of sins the truth that cleanses us as white as snow the truth that provides for all our needs in Christ Jesus the truth that protects us from our enemies the truth that truly satisfies us the truth that can fill the void of all our longing whether or not we are still waiting for that special someone 
while waiting to his coming we need to bravely share that jesus is the life the only one who can give us real life eternal life and there is no real life apart from him a while ago jesus said john 10 10 in john 10 10 the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy i have come that they may have life and have it to the full god wanted us to live a life that is to the full god is at work in our waiting for him we might not see any changes in these times of waiting particularly through times of difficulty and periods of personal growth but there is a plan and purpose in all of it jeremiah 29 11 says for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future i don't need to elaborate that further it's very clear that the plans of god for us is to prosper us not to harm us and give us a hope and a future and our greatest hope belongs only to our lord jesus christ amen and let me end up here in proverbs 8 28 while we are waiting for the lord and we know that all things work together for good to those who love god to those who are called according to his purpose amen so what are you waiting for like share and subscribe to our youtube channel and facebook pages so what are you waiting for be encouraged today that while we are waiting for the lord's second coming let's exercise patience and let's be brave and be courageous in sharing the word of God fulfilling the commission to every believers to preach the good news to the ends of the earth Lord thank you very much for teaching us your truth today thank you for truth Lord I know I always fall short of your glory so please Lord complete this message to the hearts and minds of your people help us to apply this truth into our lives daily while waiting for your second coming continue to be magnified and be glorified in our midst now and always to you alone be the glory in jesus name we pray amen and amen praise the lord hallelujah god bless everyone